Welcome back. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. And in this second tutorial, we want to talk about two kinds of constraints, which we use for cameras, but also for other objects. One constraint is the equivalent for a line to spline. And the other one is the equivalent for the target constraint. So we can target or aim with an object into a predefined direction. And with align to spline, or better to say here it's a follow path constraint, we can follow a defined path. So let's first demonstrate this with an easy setup. So first I press Shift S and Shift S brings up our snapping menu and I go to the left here, you see cursor to world origin so that we set the 3D cursor here in the center of the world. Then I use my Shift A for the add menu and here you see we have a full menu of curves and we have Bezier curves or Bezier circle. Also we have NURBS curves here and if you use special add-ons we have a much bigger menu here but I have only the standard curves active in the moment. So let's take a circle here and after adding the circle remember that you have here your options so we can change here the radius directly and I also want to bring the circle up a little bit so that we can see better what's going on. Great. The next thing we need is an object which we want to constrain to this path. So Shift A again and I go to the meshes. Let's take a cone in our case. I move the cone up here over the circle. You will see that's important. And then I want now that this cone here is now pinned to this curve. So for this we use constraints and you have to remember that you add the constraint always to the object which is moved, rotated and so on. So in our case it's a cone. So let's select the cone here. Go to the constraints which is here this icon. And if you open up the constraints tab you see there's a whole bunch of constraints because we need the constraints later for rigging. But in our case we want a really easy one. It's under relationship here and it's named follow path. So if you click this nothing happens and you will see that this constraint is not happy. So you see the name here is red and this always indicates that something is wrong or not working or you haven't finished your settings. And in our case it's waiting for the target here. You can add now the target which is our spline or busy circle by clicking here into this drop down and now Blender search for all the objects which fit into this field. So our busy circle for example. Or we can take the busy circle here and drag and drop it into the field. You see then you paste the name here and it works. Or I click here this little cross first. You can use your eyedropper tool here and hover over your outliner or also over the viewport and then if you find the right busy circle you click and now the constraint is happy. But something really strange has happened. You see we have a blue line now which is a indicator for a relationship between objects. So the relationship works but what I'm maybe not expecting is that my cone is now here so it moved up. What's the reason for this? The reason for this is an offset. You remember I use now Control Z here to bring it back to the original state. You remember that this cone here was moved after creating here upwards. We can see this in the object properties here or in the end menu which I open here and I go to item. You see that I moved this cone up around 12 meters. And in the moment you use the constraint this offset is still there. And so this circle is now the new reference point for the position and we go upwards 12 meters. So to start now clean we have to clear out all the offsets which we don't need. And for this I want to demonstrate you how to do this easily. I make these values a little bit dirty. I rotate this object and also I scale it. Now you see location, rotation and scale are all dirty. So this is an offset in all three values. How to get rid of these values? One way would be to go in here and bring everything back. So this 
has to be zero, this has to be zero, this has to be one. But if you remember the keyboard shortcuts for translating objects, for example, G for grab for moving objects or S for scale or R for rotate, you can use these keyboard shortcuts and inverse them. Every keyboard shortcut in Blender which you want to inverse uses the Option key or Alt key on your keyboard. So if I want to remove the scale here, set it back to 1, and normally scaling is S, you can now press Alt S, and the moment I do that, scale is back to 1. Great. Rotation was R, and if you use now the keyboard shortcut Alt or Option R, you will see rotation is back, and now the only thing for location, the tool is named Grab, so it's Alt G, and now the object is back here. So a really fast way of resetting uh, values back to the original state. Now let's go back to our constraints and tick here the eyedropper and everything is fine now. Great, it works. The next thing I want to talk about is how now to rotate our object. For example, I want that this object here is rotated in direction of this path here. And for this we can tick here follow curve, but it seems not to work. Why? Because it works. We have to tell now the system in which directions you want to do something. What do I mean? If you look here onto our cone and I make sure that I'm in the move tool and I'm in local view, so it's a local alignment of this widget, we see that the Z direction is looking in this direction and X in this direction and Y in this direction. And we have two options now here. One is the forward vector and one is the up vector. And you see that follow curve works because the up vector is positive Z, it looks upwards, and the forward vector here is y. So if you want to rotate now the object, we can tell him. For example, I want that this cone looks in z direction. But look what happens. If you click here, we get back a red flag. The reason for this is we have done something which is not logical. I said that z is looking into the direction of the spline or the curve, but the up vector is still z. So now we have to decide what is up and I go in here and say I want to have it in Y direction and now it looks perfectly in this direction. Z in this direction and Y upwards. If you want to rotate this, we go to negative Z. Great. And now you can work with the offset here. So if you now move here your offset, you see that this object moves around and one little side note is you see that you can overdrive the offset. So you are not limited between 0 and 100%. You can go around and around and around without any limits and also backwards. So you can go negative if you like. So I go back here to 0. And if you now want to make an animation out of this, you have two different ways. You can make a keyframe animation by hand or you can be lazy. How to do it? In the traditional keyframe way, you go over the offset field here, press the I key, which adds or inserts a keyframe. Then you move your time slider, for example, to 100 frames. And we go in here now and we say, let's take, for example, two rounds here, go over the field, press I again to set another key. Now we have two keys, shift, left arrow to go, to the start here and spacebar for playing now the animation. And that's it. How cool is that? Everything back to normal. Now we can move on a spline. And this is fully procedural, like you know. So you can go back here now to busier circle. And I can now rotate this here if I like. Or I also can go to the edit mode if I like and take this point here, grab it, and you see. Everything works like expected. Great. There's another way of animating now on a follow path. So for this, I go back now to my constraint. So select this here, go back here to our follow path constraint. 
I hover over the field here where I have my keyframes, right mouse button click and clear all the keyframes. So everything is now back to normal. And if I now press space, you see nothing happens anymore. We have no keyframes here. Instead of keying everything by myself, I can use now animate path. And before I click this, I want to show you something on the path itself. So select the curve here and go here into the path settings, which are now available. And you see here that if you go a little bit deeper here, there's a path animation field, which is ticked and we have frames and evaluation time and nothing here is working in the moment. But in the moment, I go now onto my cone, back to the constraints and I say here, animate path, you will see that something has happened. If we now go back here to the path, you will now see that the evaluation time suddenly is green. And if you now press space without doing anything, you now see that the animation is running. If you now want to change the speed, you can go in here into the frames, for example, and say, I want that you use, for example, 300 frames. And let's go back here and press, and now you see it's really slow now. So it's really a matter of changing here values, or you also can grab them here and press here. And if you now want to rotate this thing here, because it looks better if it looks into the other direction. I go here now and now you see this animation going on. So these are the options here of the follow path. So let's remove that for a moment and I get rid of this circle. And the next thing I want to demonstrate to you now, for this I grab my cone here and bring it a little bit out here. I want to show you now how to look at a point. So for this, I use now a camera. So let's add a camera. So shift A, camera here, and I name it directly, shot zero one, so that we know what's going on. I can place it first a little bit upwards, scale it so that you see it better. And the first thing I want to do is I want now to aim here this time not here on my cone, I want to aim here in direction of the monitor. And to be more flexible, I don't want to use the monitor as a target, I want to have a different target. So shift A and if you need something like a, like a null object instead of Blender, they are named empties here and you have a whole bunch of different forms of empties. I prefer in most cases the arrow. And if you place it here first in the viewport so that you see it better, you see these yeah, axes look here in the three directions. You see here that they are named really convenient. And if you want to change the size, you can select this. And we have here also some properties. Here's the size and you can switch the kind of empty around. Um, sometimes really useful are the 3D empties. You see we have cubic shapes or cone shapes and so on. But arrow is exactly what I want. I want to place now this empty exactly here. Uh, a little trick you can do, I demonstrate this. I want to, for example, uh, look here directly on the screen. What I can do is I go select my monitor tab key to go into edit mode of the monitor. And if you now select this polygon here, bring up the snap menu, so shift S. And now I say that I want to place the cursor on selected. So the cursor sits now exactly here on the screen. Now I can leave with the tab key again, my edit mode. And now I can select here my empty shift S for the snapping menu again. And here is selection to cursor. So now my selection sits perfectly here on the screen, which is important, for example, if you use depth of field and you really want to focus exactly the screen. So that's done. And now we can select our camera and I go now into the constraints, open up the constraints and we use again our track two. So here it is. I pick here now this empty and you see the name empty is not so good. So Let's name it cam target. 
And another tip I can give you, I move the empty out here for a moment. If you select here an object inside of Blender and you go here into the object properties, there's a um, viewport display option. And if you open this up, you can tick your name and you now see in the viewport the name of the object, which is really useful if you have many empties as helper objects, for example, if you aim with light sources to different points in your scene and so on. Okay, now I bring this thing now back here. And if you want to do it automatically, 3D cursor still sits here, Shift S, selection to cursor. Now it sits perfectly here again. Our camera looks strange. First, we have an offset here again. And yeah, the camera is upside down. So let's go into the constraints here. We know negative set is the direction of camera. Y should be upwards. Now we are here. Then we can grab our camera and bring it a little bit out. And now you see um, this setup works. So now you can move your camera where you want. And it always looks here to this point and always Y is upwards. So no strange rotations. Next thing we want to do is I bring back now here this cursor with my snap menu to the world origin. Shift A, curve, circle. We resize the circle here, make it bigger, bring it up here. Now we have the second constraint. So this is now our cam path. Great. And now we take our camera, go into the constraints. I close this constraint for a moment and take now here a follow path constraint. We select our circle. And like before, we have now an offset problem. So camera is selected, N key only to make sure that you understand what's happening. You see here all the offsets I made. So Alt G and the next thing is Alt R. Scale is okay. I don't want to change the scale, but now the camera looks weird. The first impulse would be now to go here into the animate path and say negative Z, Y upwards. It's okay if you do that, but it doesn't work. The interesting thing is that this here only works if you tick your follow curve. So now it works, but we don't want to let this constraint here now tell the camera in which direction it looks, because we only want to use the offset here for the position. And the track two is the constraint which tells where to look. And it's the same like in Cinema 4D, uh, we have an order of these constraints. So this is the first one and then comes this here. And what we want to do is we first want to set the position on the path and then we want to tell the camera in which direction it looks. And if you look here into the constraints, you see here there are arrows and I bring the follow path upwards first. So follow path works now here. We can now tell where it is. And here is the track two, which tells now how the rotation is made. And now you see everything works like expected. The camera is always looking here at the cam target. So if we press the zero key on our numpad, we see now we are on the monitor. Everything is fine. And now we can go here to, for example, follow path. We can now key the offset or we can be lazy, click animate path here. You remember now we have an animation and if you now press the space bar you have a nice turntable around your monitor so that's it for today i hope this helps and you understood a little bit how constraints inside of blender work my name is Helga Maus from pixel train you can write me if you have more ideas for tutorials to make cinema for the artists the life in blender to put it easier have fun